In this video, we'll discuss the Newton's laws of motion. This is actually under the topic of the dynamics of motion. Now, when we see dynamics of motion, it is actually the branch of physics concerned with the study of forces, torque, and their effect on motion. This is uh, actually opposes the definition of kinematics because in kinematics, in our previous chapter, we, we learned that kinematics just purely descriptive study of motion we just describing that's why we provided the uh, time interval the displacement velocity and acceleration those are descriptive quantities of particle in motion so uh, kinematics does not concern the causes why the causes of the object to moves but in this topic the dynamics of motion this is actually uh, in included or or deals with the cause and effect of the motion of the particle so sometimes we call this as the force and motion which means that when you apply a force when you interact the force to other particle then the net external force of that will cause motion so with that displacement will produce <coughs> the change in position okay? and there must be a velocity and there must be an acceleration it's because of the interaction of particles that results in external force okay so we will study the causes of the particle to move that's the dynamics of motion and this is also answers the question why object moves in kinematics we only answer the questions how how object moves it is just like uh, describe or it is describing the motion of the particle but in this case we will discover the causes of the object to move okay so that's dynamics of motion now before going to study the but actually we will we will study the trailers of newtons this is the most we will focus on the three laws of Newton's and uh, the first law, second law, and third law will uh, provide the uh, definitions of the three laws and some example problems that the three laws was being applied. But before that, we need to know the terms that involves forces. So we have to study the forces and its interactions. So a force is actually a push or a pull. No? There are two kinds of forces. Whether you have to apply it by pushing or you can apply it by pulling. So push or pull. So when you apply a force to an object, now if your applied force causes the change in motion, then it says that the interaction between you in the car for example we are applying a, po a force to the car and the car also applies a force towards you okay and the net forces applied will cause the change in position because it is called as the net external force so therefore force may be regarded as an action to one body on another so you have to you apply to a body and the body applied a force on you so we call that as the interaction of two of, of forces and the actions and that that will result force okay so there is a change in position if you apply a force greater amount on the uh, force on the car applied to you okay now if your force is not enough if you push a force uh, on the wall and the wall does not move then it will it won't produce motion why because your force applied was being neutralized by the reaction on the wall this means that if force are not being neutralized the change in motion will produce on the body okay so that's it it is actually coming from the interaction between forces now we have when the force applied directly in contact with the object the object 
then we call it as the contact force of two particles touches each other and both of them apply the force then we call that as a contact force now if the force applied does don't have the contact force we call that as long range for example we have two magnets now take note that north and south will attract south to south repel all of them uh, provide forces and we call that as the long range force means force that uh, applied to a separate object and we have to assume an empty space so that only the interaction between two particles will produce and we call that as the long range force the the earth exerts a force on moon and the moon also exerts a force on earth so the forces on two particles is actually called as the long range force now we are actually interacting with the sun so there must be a force on the earth coming from the sun and we have also the earth also exerts a force on the sun vice versa and that force is called again as the long range force for the reason that there is no contact it was the two objects were separated by certain distance but for the direct contact we call this as contact force okay now there are classification of forces for example concurrent when you say concurrent it is a force Forces are act only on one single point on a particle. So, all forces are aligned to towards a certain point. We call this as, as a concurrent forces. Now, if, if the forces applied to an object and does not converge with with a single point, just like this one, we call that as a non-concurrent forces. Forces that has no common point. Okay. Now, we have also the external forces. So, the external forces, actually, the force applied to object to object, and its object react to one another. If you push an object, you applied an external force to the object. And the object also applied an external force to, to you. Okay? So, we call that as external forces. Force that the body exerts on one another, on another body okay so if that force applied produce change produce external force natural force then the body will start to move okay now if we have inter external we also the internal when we say internal uh, forces by one part of the body okay on the other parts of the same body so for example our body remember is composed uh, of several parts so between parts, we have the force, okay? Uh, within a body, there are um, uh, several parts. So, the force between parts is called as the internal forces. So, in our our knee, we feel pain in that. Why? Because of the interaction between the two parts of your uh, bones. Okay, so that's internal force. Produce... A force produced by one part, uh, okay, uh, on a body, but that body composed of several parts. Okay, we have also the cook planar forces acting on one plane only. For example, in this figure we have the x and y, and there are three forces on the x and y, so we call this as cook planar because they are act on the one plane only. Now, if we analyze this in three dimensions, we have x, y, z. So, we can say that if one is along the uh, x, z plane, while if two is in the y, z plane. So, therefore, if one and if two are non-coplanar. Also, if three is along the x, y plane. So, therefore, if two, if three, two, if one, if two, if, if, if three are non coplanar forces okay so one of the important because we studied forces we should know what's the unit of force okay now so remember that we have two uh, systems of measurements we have the SI so in SI or MKS the unit of force is Newton and Newton means it has a force that will give to a one kilogram mass of the particle 
and it accelerates by 1 meter per second squared meaning 1 kilogram and a 1 1 meter per second squared acceleration it will produce 1 newton in other words 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared that's the unit of uh, force in SI or MKS but in CGS the centimeter gram seconds the unit of force must be done in the lower unit of uh, metric system so dyne is the force that can be used in SI okay forces that will give mass of one gram and the acceleration is one centimeter per second squared. so therefore one dyne must be one gram per uh, one gram centimeter per second squared. Uh, in British or English system, the FPS or the foot pound seconds, the unit of force must be poundal, and that will give one mass of slug and acceleration of one foot one foot per second squared. So one poundal means one slug foot pound per second squared. Okay, those are the so with these definitions, we have important conversions. We should have this conversion factor. When we see one kilogram force, because one kilogram is mass, but if you have the data coming from the weighing scale, the magnitude obtained from the weighing scale is called as has the unit of kilogram force or gram force. Now, what is one kilogram force? The answer is nine point eighty one newtons. So about. 10 newtons, the 1 kilogram of rice is actually about 10 or 9.81 newtons. And the 1 gram force is 980 dynes. The 1 uh, pound force is 32 pound dal, and the lugs, slug mass is 32 pounds. These are very important uh, conversions because along the way, while solving, you will undergo these units. Okay. But most of the books now uses the SI. So uh, these units uh, sometimes very seldom to, to appear in those problems. But we be ready for the conversions. You must have the idea on that. Okay. So here comes the three laws of Newtons. Now there are three laws of Newtons uh, published, no? during the time of Isaac Newton and this was the basis of the Newtonian mechanics so it means that the mechanics was born because of the three laws of Newton so what are the three laws of Newton? we have the first law the first law we call this as the law of inertia and the key word of this law is continue it will continue in motion it will continue at rest. Okay, it will continue at rest unless acted by net external force. So, if there is no net external force on that object, the body will remain, will continue at rest. Continue in motion also. The body will continue in motion with constant speed. So, it won't stop. When the particle moves at constant speed, it will continue in motion without changing its velocity unless acted upon by net external force. If you release an object in the floor, then we can expect that the object uh, stops at a certain point. Why? Because of the friction that opposes the motion. But if we ignore the force, then the body will continue in motion. Okay, so as I've said, when you hear the word, the, the law, the first law, or the law of inertia, the keyword is continue. Okay? Continue in to be at rest. Or continue moving at a constant speed unless acted upon by the net external force. In other words, first law, the net external force is zero. Okay. Now, to illustrate the uh, first law of Newton, let us consider an inclined and horizontal plane connected at uh, one point so suppose this is a plane and this is it has a rough surface so when you 
have this object at the upper part of the incline and release it from free release it freely then the object will move along the incline then after that change its direction and move along the horizontal okay now this object will stop at a certain point there are two reasons why <coughs> why uh, this object stops we have two uh, two answers one is the uh, we have the Galilean principle which means that according to Galileo Galilei the object stop a certain point because of friction okay now we have also the idea that the object will stop because the natural state of the object is at rest which means uh, it will stop because the natural state of the object is at rest but the Galilean principle dominates the definition the object will stop at a certain point because of the opposing force so we have this uh, stopping point okay then if we improve the surface of the sur uh, on this inclined plane and the horizontal plane let us see a smooth surface now we can expect that the displacement becomes uh, greater compared to the previous why because in a smooth surface it has a less amount of of opposing force which is the friction so if we imagine no, according to Galileo if you imagine a surface that has no friction we call that as a frictionless surface means there is no friction then when you release an object at the upper part of that inclined plane it will move and it won't stop it will continue in motion without stopping why because there is no opposing force so in other words the body will continue in motion without stopping unless acted upon by the net external force in this case the net external force is the friction so this is an example of of, of what of the first law of newton the key word is continue because there's no external force so the net external force must be zero okay now in uh, in our everyday life we we experience the first law for, for example if we want to type the the glue to the handle the one way to do it is to strike the handle with the glue losing glue and it will strike to the uh, ground or the lower part then the tendency is once uh, this handle touches to the ground then this metal part or the claw of the hammer will be tightened the reason is you are holding the handle and you move it towards the ground or to a hard uh, object then it will stop okay so the, the handle will stop but the claw will tend to move because it is according to the first law of Newton so the handle uh, stops its velocity but the claw is will continue in motion so it will cause uh, the, the the it will tight the the claw to the handle part okay then another another observation of the uh, first law is when you ride a car then the car suddenly move then the tendency is you will be tending to move away no? so, but it is not true the car is keep on moving but you are in a rest position so you will continue to rest but the car start to move and that's the first law okay or when you're riding a car then your velocity is the same as the velocity of the car when the car stops suddenly then you tend to move in a straight line because of the law of inertia it will continue okay now if you also move around the uh, riding the car and the car moves turn to the curb road then you feel that you will be moving away from the curb 
Okay? But the reality is you are moving in a straight line and the car keep changing its direction. So it's first law. First law of Newton. Okay? So the body will continue in motion. The body will continue at rest. And the body will continue in motion at a constant speed unless acted upon by net external force. Okay? Another evidence of, of first law is Earth. Take note, Earth. Moon is rotating around the Earth. So, therefore, uh, it this will continue in motion at a constant speed around this Earth unless acted upon by net external force. So, therefore, the moon that orbits Earth is a good example of first law. It will continue in motion. Okay? So, this moon will stop rotating if there's something that holds the moon in in, in a rest position or counter the motion of the uh, moon. Also, Earth is keep on moving around the sun. So, it is an evidence of first law of Newton. Okay. So, again, unless acted upon by net external force, so the net external force or in this symbol, okay, summation of force. So, this is uh, summation symbol. So, if you sum up all forces, uh, geometrically, because force is a vector, if you sum up all forces geometrically or vector sum or the resultant, the sum should be zero. Okay? So, therefore, there's no net external force acting on the body. So, it will continue. What? Continue at rest or maybe continue in motion. If, if the body moves at a constant speed, then the net external force must be zero. If the object is at rest, then the net external force is equal to zero. So to ensure that, I mean, when we say net external force equal to zero, we call this as equilibrium. Now there are two definitions of equilibrium. It can be at rest or static equilibrium, and it can be in motion at a constant speed or dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so both of them, the net external force is zero. So to ensure that the net external force is zero, in three dimensions, the x component of the net external force must be zero. The summation of uh, forces along y must be zero, and the summation of forces along z must be zero. This is the definition of equilibrium. So, if 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 you want to to ensure that the object has a net external force zero, so these three conditions must be satisfied. Satisfied. The x Forces must be zero, the y must be zero, and z must be zero. When you sum up this one, the net external force must be zero. Okay? So, this is it. Now, second law. The Newton second law of Newton, we call this as the law of acceleration. So, when you apply a force on an object, okay, uh, the body moves and it has the acceleration. So, the amount of force applied, the amount of force applied to the body, is actually proportional to the acceleration. The, the, the greater the force is, the greater the acceleration. The smaller the force is, the, uh, the, the net, we are talking about the net external force. The smaller the net external force, the smaller the, the acceleration. Or the greater force applied on an object, the faster it is moving because it has a greater acceleration. Okay? So we call this as the law of acceleration. So the law of acceleration is actually the continuation of the first law because the first law says that there's no external force now what will happen if there is a net external force so the answer is the net external force act on the body then the body accelerates so therefore if there is acceleration uh, there's net external force there must be acceleration if the if the net external force is zero then the acceleration is zero also that's why it can be at rest or moving at a constant speed as first law stated. Okay, so uh, very obvious that if we apply a greater force, it has a greater acceleration. So acceleration is directly proportional. In mathematics, we use directly if it is increasing. If, if the independent variable is keep on increasing also. 
directly proportional. So, if two objects, the same mass, and you have different forces, this one has a greater force, then it will arrive in earlier compared to the smaller net external force applied to the object M. It is directly proportional. Okay. Now, uh, okay, if we maintain the force, look at this one. Force here applied to a smaller mass, smaller mass M. And we have this another force, the same force applied, but this has a greater mass. So what do you think what will happen? Then, uh, we can say that the force is inversely proportional. Ah, uh, no, the net, the external, the acceleration is inversely proportional. Very obvious. If you have a large mass, then your your acceleration must be uh, smaller. But for a smaller mass, the acceleration is greater. It is inversely proportional. That's why we have another proportional acceleration is inversely proportional to the acceleration. Proportional to the mass. Okay. So, combining this two, we can say that the acceleration is directly pr or proportional to what? To the net external force but inversely proportional to its mass. So, we combine this in a single statement. Okay. Now, take note that we are concerned with sign of equality. So, if we place a sign of equality here, it doesn't mean, now in this case, that this A is equal to the result after dividing the external force by the mass. No? This is just proportional. So, what we are concerned with the sign of equality. So, in order to have the sign of equality, there must be something that we will multiply mathematically. So, in mathematics, we call this as the proportional constant. The 1 over k is the proportional constant. The role in mathematics is to balance the left member and the right member. So, we can eliminate the sign of the proportionality and we have the sign of equality. But provided we have the constant, this will not change. This will not change. Okay. So, now, if you cross multiply this one, this will become ski MA. So, the net external force is the product of the K MA. Now, what is K? Again, in mathematics, this is a uh, proportional constant. But we can equate this to 1. We call that as unity. So, when for a unity, means K is equal to 1. This will happen only that K becomes 1, provided that our mass, okay, so therefore, this is 1, so therefore, we can say that the net external force is just the product of the mass times acceleration. Now, this is only true. The 1, uh, K is equal to 1, will happen only for some units of consistency. What does it mean? Now, we call this a second law formula. So, the units must be what? Uh, by the way, the unit of Newton must be, of force must be Newton. So, our mass is what? Kilogram. And the acceleration is meter per second squared. That's why, in order to provide a unity, K equal to 1, this unit must be followed. What does it mean? The mass should be kilograms. And the, the acceleration must be meter per second squared. That's 1 Newton. Okay? Now, if we choose dyne as a unit of force, then for consistency, so that K is equal to 1, the mass should be gram and the acceleration should be centimeter per second squared. Also with poundal, if we wish to have a poundal unit of force, then uh, so that K becomes 1, the mass should be in slug and the acceleration should be feet per second squared. These are the units for consistency as k is equal to 1 or for unity okay so that's it uh, this is very important formula so the second law the law of acceleration says that the product of the moving mass remember moving mass times the acceleration the result is net external force so when we say uh, net external force, sometimes we call this as the unbalanced force or we call that as the net 
or the resultant of the particle. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the net external pole, while M or A is the acceleration of the moving particle, so it should be the acceleration of the moving particle. And the direction of the acceleration must be the same direction of the force because the acceleration is a vector quantity, so therefore, and the force is also a vic uh, uh, vector quantity, it has the direction aside from the magnitude. So, the direction of the acceleration in the first law is the same as the direction of the net external force. So, it is actually a couple of uh, vectors. So, if you know the direction of acceleration, then you know the direction of the net external force. Vice versa, if you know the direction of the net external force, then you can locate also the direction of the net or the acceleration. Now, M, this is very important. M should be the total mass of the moving particle. So, if you have something that is put on the moving vehicle, all object inside must be accumulated. You have to add everything and that will be the mass so that you can use the second law of Newton. Okay. So, therefore, this is the additional formula in kinematics. This involves force and mass. So, the acceleration is actually the turning point between the kinematics to dynamics. So, the dynamics provide the second law of Newton and the first law, also the third law. Okay? So, <clears throat> if you know the acceleration, then you can solve for the net external force. Okay? Now, if you have the net external force, then we can solve for acceleration. Then this acceleration can be used using the kinematics principle in order to solve for the velocity, the time interval, the displacement, everything. Okay? So the acceleration is the common quantity between the uh, from shifting from kinematics to dynamics. So that's it. Okay? But we cannot solve for the acceleration without the mass and without the net external force. Third law. What is third law? Third law we call this as the action reaction. So this is your cut way action reaction so uh, or the interaction so if the body the body a, a exerts a body uh, on the body b we call that as the action then the body b also exerts a force on a vice versa and we call that as the reaction so there must be two couple of forces the action which is coming from the object that applied to the object, other object, and the object responds a force or reacted that force. We call it as the reaction force. So, action, reaction is a pair of force. We call it as a couple of forces. Okay, these two forces have the same magnitude, but they have in opposite direction. Okay? Uh, Okay, so action reaction. So one good example is if if you are on the uh, snow uh, floor, in you know, a very very smooth surface, then if you wish to move to have a change in position, you have to apply a force okay, on the wall or to other object. You have to push it. Now by pushing, it's actually applying you a force opposite to your direction of force. So when if you push in direction, then the object also applied a force opposite direction. So, you have the action and we have the reaction. The reaction will cause motion. Okay? Walking. Okay. Why is it that we move uh, forward? Why? Because we apply a force backward. So, if you apply force backward by uh, moving your foot, your feet to the ground, interacting to the ground and the ground uh, apply an opposite direction of your applied force which is forward force and that's the friction so the reason why we move forward is because of the 
friction. And friction is actually the reaction due to your action force. So it is a couple of force. If there's an action, there's always an opposite equal amount of reaction. So action, reaction. There's no reaction without action. Okay? So another example if, is if you apply a force on the wall, then your your force is actually the action and the wall interacted. So the blue is the action force and the green is the force that the wall exerts on you. Whatever amount you exert on the wall, the same amount of force in opposite direction, wall exerts a force on you. We call it as the action reaction. Third law of Newton. Okay? So di diverse. Why? Uh, if you wa want to move upward, which means if you have you dive from the diving board to, towards the uh, uh, water, then you have to apply a force downward. So this must be in the drawing. This must be the action force, and the result is the board diving board will apply a force on you in opposite direction so this will cause you to move upward and then uh, projectile towards the water okay so you cannot move without your action force so action reaction is very important now the rocket engine rocket engine releases gas in opposite direction so we have the red and the friction between the rocket and the air will cause to move the rocket in this direction. The duck, uh, arrow block will the direction of the rocket engine. So there must be an action. The action is the red and the black arrow is the direction. So more gases releases in this direction, more speed or acceleration towards this direction. Okay, so it is a pair of force, the action reaction. There is no action, there's the reaction without the action force, vice versa. Okay, it is a couple of forces. Now to apply the uh three laws of Newton's, let us have this problem. So a force of sixty dynes, so this is CG's force. Take note dynes is a force. Acts upon a mass of five grams or fifteen grams. The question is how much acceleration is imparted to the body? What is A? Letter B, what is the velocity will the body acquire in 8 seconds? Which means if, if, if you do it applying a force of a constant force of 60 dynes in 8 seconds, what will be the velocity, the final velocity? If it is starts from this. Letter C, what's what distance will the body cover in this time, 8 seconds? So actually the question of B and C are questions belongs to kinematics. Okay, But you cannot solve B and C if you have no answer on letter A. Because as A uh, asks you to calculate the acceleration. Okay? Now, if you notice the given, the given is actually what the mass and the force and we have also time 8 seconds so the question is if you leave if you solve this using kinematics only using this time and the initial velocity let us initial velocity is zero then they have, there are only two givens and you can continue you can solve acceleration using the principle of kinematics so instead we have to use the second law of newton because this is talking about motion so therefore this must be what there must be net external force and the net external force is 60 dynes okay acts on the body so therefore this must be because there's no friction there uh, there's no specify that there's an opposing force then this must be the net external force and this 15 grams is our mass so therefore we have to give it so the mass and the applied force this is the net force and this force will cause the body to move so the question is what is acceleration letter b what is the final velocity and the last question is what will be the distance covered from the initial towards the final if this is at rest so assuming this is at rest so 
we can solve these three. So first, to solve for letter A, which is solving for acceleration, we need to use the second law of Newton. What's the second law? But, but for that, you have to really the Cartesian. So, <clears throat> identify the direction of the external force. This is along X only. So, therefore, there's no external force along Y, and there's no external force along Z. The net external force is along X only, and that is 69. So, with that, uh, we can use the, we can solve the acceleration by using the second law. The net external force is equal to mass and acceleration. Then, uh, since we are given the net external force 69 and the mass is 15 grams, then we can transform that, solving for A, and that is 4 centimeter per second squared. Take note, 1 dyne is 1 gram centimeter per second squared. So this is dyne. So, in other words, that the dyne per grams is equivalent to centimeter per second squared. So this is for k is equal to 1 for unity okay so uh, we are done with letter a now what how to solve for letter b so in letter b and letter c purely we will be using the kinematics of motion so solving for velocity acquires in uh, 8 seconds of travel then take note the initial velocity is 0 and we have the time the time is 8 seconds and the acceleration is 4 so we have 3 givens then we can solve for the final velocity using the uh, velocity as a function of time. This is constant. A is constant. And this will vary. And this is given as 8. So what is the velocity that covers in 8 seconds of travel? So substitute the values. 0 for the initial velocity. 4 for the acceleration. 8 seconds for the time. So we have the answer. The final velocity is 32 centimeter per second. Starting from rest, after 8 seconds, it will travel 32 centimeter per second. So this will keep on increasing no? as time increases. This is, how, this is description of the motion of the body. So we, we are able to solve for the velocity. It's because that we have no acceleration. So which means that without the acceleration, you cannot solve for the final velocity. And the acceleration was solved using the second law. And second law is the dynamics of motion. Okay. Letter C. Letter C is you are asked to solve for displacement. So you can we can utilize the given. The initial velocity is equal to zero. The time is eight, and the acceleration is four. So the same given. So the formula is because displacement then use the displacement formula. The displacement is the initial velocity times time. Uh, recall our kinematics. Initial velocity times time, and this is one half at squared. This is applicable only in a formula because the acceleration is constant. This is uniformly accelerated body. Then substitute the givens. This must be zero. Okay. And substituting the acceleration and the time, the width will provide 128 centimeters. So these are the answers to the questions A, B, C. Okay. So that's the application of the second law of Newton. Another application is, suppose I have this, okay, I have an inclined plane, and the, uh, the length of the plane is 10 meters, and it has the <coughs> angle of 30 degrees. Now, suppose we have an object 20 kilograms upper part of the inclined plane. Now, if we release this freely, means the initial velocity is zero, release it freely, this object will move down the plane because of its gravity. The component of the gravitational force parallel to the inclined plane will cause the object to move along the plane. So if you release it, now at zero velocity, without friction, this, this will move down the plane. So the question is, how much is acceleration? Take note of what we don't apply force. All we do is to re release it from, from rest, release it freely, then it will, it will move with an increasing velocity. So, since there's an increase in velocity from zero to the final velocity, then there must be acceleration. Vice versa, because it accelerates, velocity will be keep on increasing. Okay? As a function of time. So, how will you answer this problem? As I've said again, if you use kinematics without using the trillions of newtons, you cannot solve this problem. We have only given initial velocity in kinematics. 
That's it. And this is not freely pulling body. We cannot say the acceleration is 9.8 because there's a contact. There's uh, in in freely pulling body. Uh, there's no other. Uh, eh, there's no other uh, factors that can influence the motion of the body. It is only the gravity. But in that case, there is a contact between the surface that will uh, reduce the or increase the reduce or increase the motion of the particle. So therefore, this is not a freely pulling body. Then we can say that A is 9.8. Now, without this surface, without this contact, if we release it freely, then it will move at 9.81 or the gravitational gravitational uh, acceleration of uh, Earth. 9.8. But in this case, again, A is not equal to gravity. So, if it is not equal to gravity, how much? Is it greater or, or smaller than gravity? Which means, it, is it uh, greater than 9.81 or smaller than that? So, let's see if, what's the answer. So, to answer this one is to analyze this. Analyze the forces that act on the body. So, since we have no friction here, so there is no friction between the object, then the only force uh, pr present on this object is only the gravity. Because the weight, take note, the weight is the force that the earth exerts on that particle. Your weight, your weight is the force applied by uh, earth on you. So, the, the gravitational force is the force that the earth exerts on us. So, in this case, only the earth applies a force, long range force. It is a long range force. Only earth exerts a force on the 20 kilogram object. So, in this case, to solve, you can solve for first for A, then you can solve for the velocity, and you can also solve for the time. Because we have L. This is the displacement L. So, for that, you have to solve acceleration first. So, you have to analyze the forces. We have only one force, and it is weight. Weight, remember, the weight is the product of the mass and gravity. Because Newton's law, take note, in Newton's law, the net external force is the product of the mass and acceleration. So, if you have, because we are talking about the gravity, okay, gravitational force, so the acceleration must be gravitational acceleration. So, 9.81 multiplied by the mass, the result is weight. So, it is actually the formula of the weight, which is mass times the gravity, is follows the first second law of Newton, but all pattern to the second law of Newton. This is the mass, and this is acceleration, and this must be the weight or the force. Weight is the force of gravity. Okay, so weight is mass times the gravity. So with that, we need to overlay, and we have to identify as where's the direction of motion. So, in this case, if we orient this as the x-axis, perpendicular to that, can be called as y. So, we can say now that the net external force is actually along the x-axis. Along the x-axis. Okay? So, uh, therefore, we have two components. We have the weight along y and weight along x. Now, take note in geometry, this is 30 degrees. Remember, if this is 30 degrees then this must be 30 degrees also. Okay? The reason is, this line intersect to this line perpendicularly. And this one also, one of the side angle which is on 30 degrees. If you extend this drop downward, this will provide 90 degrees also. So therefore, whatever angle here, theta, this must be theta also. Or if this is 30, this must be 30. So therefore, this must be 60 degrees. That's it. That's geometry. So with that, since we know how much is the weight, because weight is the product of the, uh, this is 20, multiplied by 9.8, so therefore this is given. And this is 30 degrees. So therefore we can solve for the x and y component of weight. Take note in our previous Victor's analysis. And uh, remember that the angle is coming from the y. So therefore, if in, our, in our kinematics, we, uh, in our Victor's analysis, the x component we, we, we learn that the x component is cosine, the y component is sine. It's because that the angle 
is complement which means that the angle is coming from x but in this case be careful because the angle is coming from y so you have to reverse the trig function so therefore if because because uh, the angle is adjacent to y component so the y component must be cosine while the x component becomes sine okay do not confuse about the one so therefore now the purpose of having this Cartesian is to know where's the net external force. And so far, we have only two forces, Wx and Wy, the component. Of, you can ignore W because you have already the, the component of Wx and Y. So, therefore, okay, so we can say that the reason why this object moves along this plane is because of the component of weight along X or along the plane. The perpendicular component which is the y this is actually the factor that this object touches the surface so this is to ensure that there must be a contact the moment that this object roll over this inclined plane <coughs> roll down this inclined plane it's because in contact because of wy but the reason why this is moving down the plane it's because of wx so therefore we need to solve for Wx because Wx is our net external force. By the way, we call this as the free body diagram. In in in, in dynamics of motion, and you apply the second law of Newton, you should have the free body diagram. When you say free body diagram, it is the uh, diagram, Victor's diagram, showing all forces act on the <coughs> particle. In this case, we have only one force, and that's the gravity, because we ignore friction. So therefore, uh, we need to resolve that into two components in order to isolate along x and isolate along y. So we have now w x w y. So in this case, obviously w x is our net external force, and your y is the factor that the object will remain in contact with the surface. Without this w y, we cannot assure that this object have a contact with the inclined plane. So with that, we have to use the force polygon. Okay, recall the force polygon, the component of X, component of Y, W. Please, uh, you are advised for those who haven't seen yet the vector analysis. So, it's good to study first the vector analysis in order to understand this one. This is a force polygon. So, this is Y, this is X. So, this must be 90 degrees. And the angle must be what? 30. And that's coming from the Y axis. So, therefore, since we know the W is MZ, so therefore we can use for wy and that is cosine and wx is sine okay so utilizing among these two we need only wx for now why because we don't have friction so therefore wy uh is not applicable in this problem so we have we need only the wx so uh wx is w sine theta but w take note is mg so this will be our net external force so using the second law net external force is equal to the mass and acceleration our net external force is w sine theta okay so or wx so wx now is the net external force the mass is the moving mass which is 20 the acceleration is we don't know but wx is w <coughs> sine theta but w is mg okay so therefore we can we can cancel the mass so that's meaning acceleration is mg over sine theta but the mass will be cancelled so we have only g sine theta okay so therefore it answers to the problem if you want to know how much is acceleration of the inclined plane if friction is zero then it's simply as g sine theta which means that mass it's not required to solve for the acceleration so if you roll this let us say 50 kilograms your acceleration is the same okay the weight does not affect the uh, acceleration and its velocity okay it affects only if we measuring the force but in this case acceleration mass is not a factor of the acceleration Okay, so even if a small object or a great big object, it has the same acceleration, theory says.
Okay. So, <coughs> uh, before we, we, we solve this problem, we, we ask if, if this this greater than 9.8 or less than 9.8. Look at the answer. The acceleration is G sin theta. That's a sin theta, remember. The maximum sin theta is only 1. So, if, if the only way uh, that this will become 1 if the angle is 90. So, if the angle is 90, this will become pre fall Which means, if, if we let this inclined plane to, to to a vertical orientation such that the angle becomes 90, so sine of 90 be, sine of 90 is 1, so the acceleration is G. That's the time that we call that as a pre-falling body. But as long as the angle is less than, is between 0 to 90 degrees, then the acceleration must be what? Less than the gravitational acceleration because this will produce less than 1. Okay, so that's the answer. Now, uh, okay, substitute the values, then we can solve for the uh, velocity. Uh, this is by acceleration 4.91 meter per second squared is the answer. Solving for the final velocity, take note the initial, this is purely kinematics. Initial is 0, displacement is 10, okay, then the acceleration is 4.91. Then you can use this relation, this coming from the uniformly accelerated body. Okay, so then substitute the values. By the way, this is 0, take square root, okay. Uh, take square root, then this must be 9.91 meter per second. These are the answers to the problem. Okay? So, this is how we apply the laws of Newton. So, for your practice, uh, your advice to solve this problem in your own idea, then provide the solutions using the... The hint is you have to provide the free body diagram first. After knowing the preparatory diagram, identify the direction of the motion of the particle, and that will be your that will be your net external force. So <clears throat> the the preparatory diagram, diagram played an important role in in solving using the Newton's law. So in the next video, uh, we will focus on the application problems of the Newton's law. So we will involve free body diagram and also the friction because we are now on the way to include the friction. In this case, friction is negligible. Okay, so uh, that's all. So, thank you.